Hi guys, um, we're continuing with um, our idea of slope and lines. Um, so in this section, this corresponds to 5.6 in your book, um, but we're going to talk about how to graph things in slope-intercept form. So there's kind of two important pieces here. So one is the y-intercept. So this is the point where the graph crosses the y-axis, and we use the letter B to represent the y-intercepts. I don't have a clever reason for why like I did with the um, M for slope, but B represents the y-intercepts. So in this um, example, it says, what are the coordinates of the y-intercepts? So x is always 0. So if I want to get to the point on the y-axis, I don't go left or right at all. 0 is the x that goes with it. And then I go up to 2, and that's where it's crossing. So 2 is my y-intercept, but this would be the ordered pair or the coordinates for that y-intercept. So it always has that format. It's always 0, and then whatever that number is that our line crosses the y-axis at. Um, okay, so here is slope-intercept form. So y equals mx plus b, so we see that letter m coming back again, which is the slope, and we looked at ways to find that um, in the last section, either by looking at the graph and counting rise over run, or um, using the slope formula y minus y over x minus x. So now we're going to use this form. So this equation represents a line, and it tells us two things about it. It tells us the slope and the y-intercept. Um, a lot of students ask, what are the x and the y? Um, those are just representing the independent variable and the dependent variable. Those can change depending where on the line we are. So I could put in a different x and see what y would correspond to a point on the line. So those vary. So we're going to leave the y and the x there, but we're going to come up with numbers for the slope and the y-intercept. Okay, so here we are given this equation. So it looks just like this. y is by itself. We have a number in front of x, and then a number being added or subtracted um, on the end. So m is always the coefficient in front of x, the number in front of x. So in this case, it is 1 third. This does not include x. The slope is not x. It is always just the coefficient or the number in front. The y-intercept, so in this case, we are subtracting. Um, so another way I could have written that is I could have written y equals 1 third x plus negative 2. So negative, oh, sorry, my screen cut off there. Okay, so that's another way I could write that. We don't usually see that because we like um, a little more simplified with only one symbol there. But the negative 2 is really where um, my line is going to cross the y-axis. So if it's a minus sign, it is a negative y-intercept, meaning our graph is going to cross that negative 2. So here's how we use that information to graph the line. We are going to start with the y-intercept. So I know that that point is where my graph crosses on the y-axis. So I'm going to find negative 2 on the y-axis, and I'm going to put a point. Next, we're going to use our slope to get a second point. So if I treat this um, as rise over run, I'm going to get the two different components I need. So rise is 1, meaning from this spot, I'm going to go up 1, and my run is 3. So I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3. Now, how did I know to go to the right? Well, I want my graph to be increasing and rising because it's a positive slope. If it was a negative slope, I could go down and then over so that my line would then be decreasing. You only need two points to create a line, so you could stop right here. If you want to keep going, though, you absolutely can. You can keep going up 1 over 3 up one over three. And if you want the line to continue going this way, you'd go down one and left three. So you absolutely can keep the line going with points, but you only ever need two to create an accurate line. And I'm gonna go ahead and connect this just to make it stand out a little bit more. Okay, and you guys will wanna connect. After you draw your two points, your y-intercept, and then use your slope to get a second point, you wanna connect it and put the arrows on the ends to show that it would continue in that fashion. Okay, let's do some more examples here. All right, so we are gonna start here always with the y-intercept. So my y-intercept here is negative one, I have that minus sign, and my slope is one fourth. So always start with the y-intercept, point at negative one on the y-axis, rise over run, it's positive, so I'm gonna go up and over so that my line is gonna go this direction. So I'm going to go up one, one, two, three, four, and put another point, and then I can connect those to get my line, putting arrows on the end. Next one, y-intercept here is positive two, 
And what is the slope? It is not negative x. It is the number in front of x. So if I were to put a number in front of x right here, it would be negative 1. Now, slope is really helpful when I have a fraction, so that I have the rise and the run. So if I ever have a whole number or an integer and I want to make it a fraction, I just put it over 1. Okay, so I have a slope, or excuse me, y-intercept of 2, so at positive 2 on the y-axis, put a point. From there, I need a slope of negative 1 over 1. So I'm a, I want my line to go this direction. So I'm going to go down and then over so that it does that. So I'm going down 1 for the rise and over 1 for the run. So now if I connect those, I see it's going to have that downward, downhill look that a negative slope should have. Okay. All right. Okay, number three. Y-intercept is 3, slope is negative 4 thirds, and they do put the negative sign right in the middle. That's okay. The main idea is the slope is negative, so my line should be slanting down. Okay, so start with the y-intercept, 3. From here, I need a rise of 4 and a run of 3, and I need my line to go downward. So I'm going to go down 4 for the rise and over 3 so that I get that downward look. All right, okay, here I don't have a number on the end. So when that happens, I'm not adding or subtracting anything. Our b is zero. So my y-intercept, I'm just gonna put right at zero, zero right here. My slope is negative four, and again, because it's not a fraction, I'm gonna make it a fraction and be over one so that I have the rise and the run piece. Again, it's negative, so it needs to be slanting down. So I'm going to go down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1. Okay, this one's a little steeper here. All right. It's really a test your ability to draw straight lines. If you want to use a ruler for that, that is more than okay. All right, so this goes back to kind of the first video. When we have y equals a number, it is a horizontal line through that number. Um, another way you can think about that is this is the same as y equals 0x minus 1. So we, won't, we don't typically write 0x, right? 0 times anything is just 0. So they could always simplify that to be just this. So 0 means I have a 0 slope, meaning if I start at my y-intercept, negative 1, I go up 0 and over however many. It doesn't matter. But if I'm going up 0, I'm just getting a horizontal line through that value. So y equals a number is a horizontal line through that number. x equals a number. This is the only time where we have x equals instead of y equals, and this is for the unique situation where our slope is undefined. Oh, I'm gonna write slope zero on that one. Where our slope is undefined and we don't have a y-intercept. Okay, so in this case, when it's x equals a number, it's going to cross that number on the x-axis. So at 5, I'm going to put a point, and then it's going to be a vertical line through that value. All right, uh, we've got just another example or two here, you guys. So sometimes we might have an equation that doesn't look... Um, like we want it to. It's not in slope-intercept form. So I have this note over here. This would be helpful maybe for you guys to write. But this is just like literal equations. So when I have multiple variables in the equation, but I want to get one of them by itself, slope-intercept form is our y equals mx plus b. y is by itself, and then I have a number in front of x, and another number being added or subtracted. That's our y-intercept. So I want to get it in this form, meaning I need to get y by itself. So in this equation, y is not by itself. It's got some x's over here, and it's got that negative 2 in front. So we're going to start by getting rid of the x's. I'm going to add 3x. I'm doing the opposite. And I got to do the same thing to both sides. Okay? So I'm going to rewrite that over here. So I got negative 2y equals, I obviously can write 6 plus 3x. I cannot add those together because they're not like terms. However, I'm going to give you one helpful hint. Notice in this form, the x's come first, and then the y-intercept. So I'm actually going to write the 3x first, and then it's a positive 6. So here's kind of what we were doing before. We would have said 6 plus 3x. That's absolutely fine. 
that's absolutely fine. Those are the same thing. But just so it looks more like what we're used to seeing for our lines, I like to put the x's first. Now next up, we're going to divide by negative 2. Very important that we divide everything by negative 2. So I'm going to divide y by negative 2, 3x by negative 2, and 6 by negative 2. Every single piece. So I'm going to get y equals... I'm going to leave that as a fraction because that's my slope. So I'm going to write it as negative 3 halves x. Those are equivalent ways to write that. I kind of pulled the numbers away from the x. 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3. So now it's in slope intercept form and I can pick out my b is negative 3 and my slope is negative 3 over 2. So when I graph, y intercept starts at negative 3 negative 3 over 2, so I'm going to go down 3 and over 2. My graph kind of runs out, um, so actually I'm going to go up and over this way so that my graph is still going to come this way. What's important is the vertical amount I go still has to be 3, and the horizontal amount I go still has to be 2. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, and over 1, 2. Notice when I connect those, I'm still going to get that nice downward look for a negative slope that I need. All right, last one here. All right, in this one, we're going to do the same exact thing. We want to convert it to slope intercept form, excuse me, so that it's easier to graph. So we can pick out the y intercept and the slope. So we're going to do the same process, get y by itself. So I'm going to write this over here so we can see all the steps. All right, so I'm going to start by getting rid of the x's, doing the opposite, and add x to both sides. So 2y equals, again, I'm going to write the x first. So I could write negative 8 plus x, but I'm going to write x and then that's a negative 8, so x minus 8, okay? Divide everything by 2. Now here, um, if I were to put a number in front of x, it would be a 1, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do that to make this division part a little easier. So I'm going to divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. So I get y equals 1 half x minus 4. My slope then is negative, or excuse me, y, y intercept is negative 4, and my slope is positive positive one half. Start with the y-intercept, negative four on the y-axis. I have a positive slope, so I'm going to go up and then over this direction so that it's going to increase. So I'm going to go up one and over two, connect my two points, and draw arrows on the end for my line. <laughs>